Hi, good afternoon. This is not the video that I intended to make because of world events. I'm going to make this one because this video presentation contains a lot about the Jewish people, about the nation of Israel, and because of world events now that are happening, whether it's going to escalate or not, only time will tell. But if you've been watching news today, the 13th of uh, April 2024, you know that Iran has sent drones, possibly even cruise missiles, that, that part has not been confirmed, into Israel. We don't know what Israel will do other than try to shoot them down, which uh, maybe this is just a test case on Israel's part to see if they can weak, weaken Israeli defense uh, equipment. You know, time is going to tell. But within the next 48 hours or so, we'll know one way or the other. Now, this is not the reason I'm making the video. The reason I'm doing this is I want to show you from the Bible what God Almighty and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Blessed Holy Spirit have planned and purposed for the nation of Israel. Now, a lot of people, all they know is Israel is God's chosen nation and someday Jesus is going to come back and he's going to set up his headquarters in Jerusalem, Israel. Well, if they didn't even know that much, they're doing better than a lot of Christians that know nothing about the future of Israel and the future of Jerusalem, period. I mean, you talk to the average Christian and, and they say, well, um, Israel is God's chosen nation and someday Jesus is coming back, period. That's about all they know. So today I'm going to give you the scriptures that, that hopefully will form a foundation for you in your future so you can be a little bit more intelligent and share your knowledge with other people that really want to know about the future of Israel. Now, disclaimer, I'm not saying that this is going to happen tomorrow our next month, our next year, our five years from now. I am not the Lord. I do not know when all this is going to happen. As I read these scriptures, you're going to hope that this happens soon because the people of God, the ones that are grafted in, which are the Gentiles grafted into the, the Jewish people, we, of course, in fact, matter of fact, that's another lesson in itself about who are the elect. Now, a lot of people say, well, the Jews are God's elect. Well, in a sense, yes, they are, in a sense. But the elect are God's born again through the blood of Jesus Christ, people of God who receive Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, as their Savior. So there are Jews that are Messianic Jews. We call them Messianic Jews that are born again, of course. Now I'm going to lead in with a couple of scriptures that I want you to apply to yourself. So as I'm <clears throat> reading these, just picture yourself as being one of these chosen ones and uh, whether you're Jew or Gentile, because the Bible says there's neither Jew or Gentile there's neither, uh, you know, what does it go? You know what, I forgot scripture, sorry about that. But yes, it does say there is neither Jew nor Gentile. We are all one in Christ Jesus. There's neither male or female and so on. We are all one in Christ Jesus. So, bearing that in mind, I just want to continue with a couple scriptures. Then I'm going to get into Zechariah. The book of Zechariah is beautiful. The book of Isaiah, <clears throat> those are two books in the Old Testament that will give you a, a lot of information on uh, the uh, nation of Israel and Jerusalem. But 
just bear in mind now, these scriptures are for you, for you. But we should, this is Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. But we should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and faith in the truth. Keep in mind, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation. So you were chosen from the beginning. And uh, then in verse, uh, well, in Romans <clears throat> chapter 8, verses 29 through 30. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestinated to become conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom he predestinated, which is you and me, he also called, and those whom he called, he glorified, <clears throat> or he justified, sorry, let's do it over, and those whom he predestinated, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified, and that's in Romans 8, 29, 30. I love that one. So you were chosen before the foundation of the world. And there is a scripture that says that. And you know what? I forgot to put it in here. But you can find it in your Bible. It's there. You, me, we were chosen before, before the foundation of the world. <clears throat> okay, then I'm going to read 2 Timothy 1 and 9. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. 2 Timothy 1 and 9. And then I want you to remember in John chapter 15, 6, Jesus Christ himself says this, you did not cho choose me. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go forth and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So bear in mind you did not choose Jesus. He chose you. You know, sometimes when you talk to a person that's just been saved, just been born again, they say, well, I found Jesus. I found Jesus. No, you didn't find Jesus. Jesus chose you from the foundation of the world. He knew when you'd be conceived, when you would be born, if you'd be a boy or a girl, he knew your talents, the talents and abilities that he himself by the Holy Spirit would give you because you were chosen from the foundation of the world. <clears throat> Whenever there is a conception between sperm and egg and a child, a baby is conceived, it is a person. How be it? in its very tiniest little stages. I'm not going to get into that right now. I made a video on that and got a lot of, I just thought, no, well. But yes, at the moment of conception, you were not a surprise. You were chosen, if you were chosen to be born again one day, to be chosen by Jesus Christ, you are certainly not a surprise in the heart and the mind of God. And you know, I find it funny, i got to say this. When a Christian dies, isn't it funny that we always say, well, he went home to be with the Lord. Or she's dying and soon she'll be going home to be with the Lord. Why do we say going home if we've never been there? I mean, when I leave my home and go to town and I come back to my home, I'm coming home. 
or in other words, do you get the drift? I'm sure you do. So if we've never been in heaven in our pre-existence as human beings, I wonder why we say that. Well, they just died, but they're going home to be with Jesus. Think about that. Have we been there? Have we been in heaven before we were conceived? I don't know, but it's an interesting question. Okay, I want to talk to you about the many scriptures in Zechariah that speak of... Well, I'm just going to read the scripture because I, I'm recording this at my kitchen table because the battery was gone and I have to keep it plugged in. So it's not very pretty here, but I had no choice to be able to read. Okay, we're going to tell you something. If you want to know more about Israel's future, not the past, but Israel's future, Jerusalem's future, read through the book of Isaiah and read this in the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 12, if you want to jot that down and read it at your convenience. And uh, the amazing chapter 14 of, of Zechariah will make you so happy because that's going to tell you what happens when Jesus returns to this earth <clears throat> in Jerusalem when his feet shall stand. In fact, let's just read it. Okay, I'll read I'll read the last part first because it will help you understand. Zechariah chapter 14. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of you. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women be ravished, <clears throat> and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. So warfare eventually is going to come to Jerusalem, is going to come to Israel. And I say eventually, I don't mean right now, because I don't know God's timing, but I can say for certainty, eventually warfare will come to Israel, and it will be very harsh on the uh, Jewish people. And God has a reason for this. <clears throat> but we're just going to go ahead and uh, and read a little bit more. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. In other words, the nations which come against Israel. God's going to go forth. Jesus himself will go forth and fight against those nations as in the day of battle. And verse 4 says, I love my, one of my favorite verses, <clears throat> And his feet shall stand that day on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there will be a very <clears throat> great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half toward the south. <clears throat> Excuse me, and you will flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach to Azale, yea, and you shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord, now, Zechariah is building up to something. This is what he's building up to. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. That's when Jesus returns at his second coming and all the saints will be with him. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. It will just be a nice light. 
but not a bright light. <clears throat> and it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord. And it shall come to pass in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter it shall be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as you know very well, his name shall be Jesus Christ, the Son of God, King of kings, Lord of lords, God of all gods, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, God of all ages, without beginning and without end. And then it goes on to say, I'm skipping down in um, verse 11. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And this shall, but now before Jerusalem is safely inhabited, there will be this warfare that I spoke of before. Because you got to remember, not everything in the Bible, and especially like this book, Isaiah and uh, Revelation, is necessarily in chronological order. And in this case, it's not. Because now we skip down to verse 12, and the Lord is speaking of this. He says, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that are fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. It's going to be terrible for the enemies. The enemies of Jerusalem... Jesus Christ himself is going to make warfare against them. Now, at what time frame this will be? That's up to the Lord. I can't say, but it will be pretty much all together. And their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And... Uh, and then it says, And it shall come to pass, verse 16, that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even come up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And uh, verse, and yes, the feast days will be reinstituted uh, by Almighty God for his good pleasure and that's another subject we'll just leave it until next another time but in that day <clears throat> there shall be bells up on the horses holiness in big bold print here holiness unto the Lord so yes this is what's coming to Israel this is what's coming to Jerusalem um, Actually, the Bible says that I think it's two-thirds of the people living in the land of Jerusalem during the warfare will, will probably die. But, you know, we, most of us die and, uh, unless we're caught up in the rapture. And God has a special place in his heart and in his kingdom for the Jewish people that die. Now, I've thought often about that. What about the Jewish people that die, died in the Holocaust? What about the Jewish people that die without receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Well, then my mind goes to the verse that says... Uh, there is none other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved than the Lord Jesus Christ. So again, I'm not a, a brilliant theologian. I'm not even a theologian. But there are certain questions in the Bible that are a little bit, or maybe a whole lot, unanswered. But I think, in my reasoning... I think that because Almighty God 
the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit have a great love, a great, well, they cherish and deeply love the Jewish people. And I'm certain that God has a place for them in eternity. And I'm pretty certain that even though they have not had the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as Savior, maybe they've never been witnessed to by anybody, so they don't know what it's like to actually receive Christ into their heart, I still believe God has a special place for them in eternity. I don't believe God sends Jews to hell because they haven't personally received Christ as their Savior. Now, whether they'll be given great rewards, you know, in the heavenly kingdom, whether they'll be given great rewards in the, during the thousand-year millennium, I, I can't really say. But I don't think God is going to lose them if they're a true Jew. And about that subject, we got to remember there's a verse in um, Revelation where Jesus uh, warns us about those that say they are Jews but are not. They are of the synagogue of Satan. So there are phony Jews. There are phony Christians. So just because a person says they're a true Christian doesn't necessarily mean they've been born again. And just because a person says that they're a true Jew doesn't necessarily mean it's the truth because there are Jews that are phony Jews. They are not true Jews. The Bible says that in the book of Revelation very clearly. Jesus Christ says they say they are true Jews, but they are not. They are of the synagogue of Satan. So here's what I want to tell you. The former capital of Israel was Tel Aviv. And I believe President Trump changed it to Jerusalem, which is wonderful that he did because Jerusalem in the millennium, the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ, will be the capital of Israel and the capital of the world, of the world. So it's a great thing that Jerusalem is now the official capital. Um, and I lost my train of thought because my cat got up and walked over to the door. Thankfully, it's it's sealed so she can't get out. Layla, you made me lose my train of thought. Um, well, I'm sorry. I just did, I just lost my train of thought. Well, you'll just have to forgive me for that. I was think I was talking about. Oh, Tel Aviv, and it came back to me. Thank you, Lord. I wanted to tell you this. The former capital of Israel was Tel Aviv. And t sad to say, Tel Aviv, Israel, is a hot spot for the homosexual, transgender community. It's one of the most heavily populated cities on the face of the earth, just full of homosexuals and those of that persuasion. And I think God really put it in President Trump's heart and mind to change the capital back to Israel, I mean to Jerusalem, in honor of God and in honor of the true Jewish people. Now, the Orthodox Jewish people, they keep the Sabbath, and that meaning on Friday at, at sunset, all work stops. Their table is set with a beautiful feast. The candles will be lit and the prayers will be said. They adhere to the Old Testament, to the Torah, the first five books of the Bible in particular, the ones written by Moses. And they are the true Jews. They have not maybe been witness to about Jesus being the true Savior. But like I said, I, I just can't bring it my I can't bring it into my heart or mind to believe 
that God will cast away the true Jews. And if you've seen the movie of the Diary of Anne Frank or Schindler's List, some of those movies about the Holocaust, I mean, no, God has a place in his heart for the true Jews, but he doesn't have a place in his heart for the phony Jews, those that say they are Jews, but they are not. They are the, of the synagogue of Satan. Therefore, therefore, when we discuss the nation of Israel, when we discuss the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, we must be careful to not just put them in one, you know, one basket and say, they're all good. They're all God's people. They're all chosen by God, you know, because no, there is a division there. There is a division there. Just like if there's a division among the people that say they're Christians and they're Mormons or Jehovah Witnesses or Christian scientists. No, they're not true Christians. They can say they are. They can go to church and say they are, but they're not. They're phony Christians. They're, uh, they're deceived. They're not born again, and they're not Christians. So there is a dividing line among Christians the same as there is among Jews. Well, I do hope I've helped you to some extent. I know it's a long, long study. I only hit the very tip of it. But I hope I've helped you understand a little bit about this. And I do, I, of course, I wanted to add this. Of course, America should come to the aid of Israel if Israel is threatened to be attacked or if Israel is attacked. I don't see why we wouldn't come to the aid of Israel. Um, but that again, another subject for another time. I will leave that between you and the Holy Spirit and uh, I'll leave that between you and your study of the Word of God because God's God Almighty, uh, who is also the Holy Spirit, He is our teacher, our comforter and guide, and He will teach you the truth when you seek Him in any subject, in any matter. He will teach you all truth. He will guide you and lead you into all truth through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you for your patience and your time. And uh, we'll see what the next few days bring. This could just be a, a test run by Iran uh, to see if they can weaken the IDF's defense uh, capabilities or if they're going to go for gold and turn this into a real war. And if they do, I will say this, if, uh, <clears throat> if Iran does use cruise missiles and if they do go nuclear and unleash nuclear weapons, I would say we would pretty much have to be in officially, we would officially have to be in World War III because once the nuclear start, once the nuclear weapons start flying, whether it's Russia and Ukraine or whether it's Iran and Israel or whether it's Taiwan and China, some way, somehow, the United States is going to become involved. You can count on that. And when we do become involved in nuclear war, it will be very, very unpleasant. Now, your part in all this, beloved, and I do love you, and I thank you for all the support, love, and encouragement you've given me over the years, five years or more. But your part in all this, my beloved viewers, is to stay close to Almighty God, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't done that yet. Repent of your sins. Tell God you're sorry for your 